Hey everyone, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys and today I'm really excited because as you can see we're going to be building a PC from the ground up. This is all based around the brand new NZXT H9. This is a dual chamber gaming PC case. It has glass on the side and the front and this is the flow version. They also have the H9 Elite which would have glass on the top as well. And then on the back here on the flow it's all mesh. They of course have the intake up here on the right side and then exhaust in the back, intake on the bottom. It's meant to be a very uh, spacious area to build in, to use a lot of high power components, but then also a, a way to show off a lot of components as well with all this glass on the side and the front. Another brand new thing we're gonna be showing off from NZXT is the C1200 Gold PSU, their new power supply. Uh, just a beefy, beefy PSU I'm really excited about. Also gonna be using Intel 13th Gen with the 13700K. We have a motherboard from NZXT as well, the Z790. We have the PNY GeForce RTX 4070 Ti. This just came out. I've actually been using this a little bit on my other PC and it's been a lot of fun to use, so very excited about that. And of course we have some RAM from Corsair, DDR5, 32 gigabytes, and then we have WD Black's latest NVMe M.2 drive. This is the SN850X. So a lot of great hardware to be putting in here. This is actually the first time I've ever done a complete PC build from the ground up, so I'm pretty excited about that. I've basically done Done everything else, you know, from swapping cases, swapping motherboards, CPUs, GPUs, hard drives, you name it. I've pretty much done all the little pieces, but never everything all together in one brand new build. So I am really excited about this. As we go through, we'll be showcasing, you know, all the features of the case. We'll be talking about the individual components that we're putting in. And then ultimately at the end, we'll show some benchmark figures and, you know, just see what all this is capable of doing. So let's dive in and check it out. So as this is my first time from the ground up, I'm gonna be following the Linus Tech Tips how to build a PC guide just to make sure I'm getting the order right. But first we are going to dive in and talk about the case a little bit. So first we saw the H7 and then we saw the H5, which I did a review of a little, a little while ago. And now we have the brand new H9. So this is their biggest. Um, as you can see here, it's a pretty, <laughs> it's a pretty beefy case. But the main purpose of that is to allow some more versatility in here for you know, adding more SSDs, adding more HDDs, and then also more cooling as well. So it does come with four fans, uh, just you know, stock out of the box. You can see the three along the side here, and then there's one in the back, the exhaust. But it has enough room for a radiator up top here, one in the front, and one on the bottom as well. So lots of room in there for cooling and for getting a lot of airflow. Speaking of airflow, this is the H9 Flow. So it has mesh on top, it has mesh on this side too, on the second component, and then in the back and on the bottom there is mesh as well. So you can pull in and push out a lot of air from all those different, uh, all those different panels. And I talked about this with the H5, but what I like about NZXT's cases is that they're so simple. And because of that simplicity to me, they look really elegant. They're not, you know, overly gamery with all these kind of uh, unnecessary little visual components. It's very boxy, but that also makes it very simple and I like the aesthetic of it. So it really highlights, you know, what's going on on the inside, especially with the H9 with all that glass. So the panels are going to be easy to take off. Let's pop off the glass here in front. So you can see how that looks. Uh, it does slot in the bottom and there's just one thumb screw in the back that holds that in place. And flipping it around to the other side, it is equally as easy to get this side off as well. One thumb screw, just pop it out, pull it up, and then you're into that back chamber. There is a, this kind of panel right here can hold up to four SSDs. That's removable to make that mounting a little bit easier. And then there is a whole other little sleeve compartment here for hard drives as well. So that's something that's kind of nice. Uh, with the H5, they removed the little tray, which I mean, most people probably don't use hard drives very much anymore, you know, actual like big spinning disks. Um, so they removed the whole tray for those. There's no place to put them. So if you have those, you're kind of out of luck. You kind of have to shoehorn them in there somewhere. But on the H9, there's a big sleeve for those if you need it. You know, otherwise you can take that out if you don't need it. And then as a dual chamber case, one of the big features here is that there's this massive cavity for 
the PSU. So that'll sit up here rather than underneath all the components as like a smaller case, you know, you would usually see it. And then of course there are channels all over the place to route cables and cable ties. Um, so while we're going through this build process, I might highlight some of those different things, but uh, overall, I'm really excited to dive in here and uh, start this build. Another nice thing here that I think is a little bit different than the H5 is that this tray in the front is removable if you want to uh, pull that out so that you can put um, some different fans. If you want to work on that a little bit, get some different fans in there or put a radiator in there. On the top here, we've got power. We've got two USB-A ports, one USB-C, and a 3.5 millimeter. That's gonna be for microphone and uh, headphone audio. First thing we're gonna do is dive into the motherboard. All right, so for the motherboard, we have the NZXT N7Z790. We're using the Intel 13th Gen uh, 13700K. So this would be a perfect board for that. Now this should be a very good looking motherboard and also a high performance motherboard for this case, for this build. So really excited to see how this all performs. Of course, this does support DDR5. We have DDR5 from Corsair we'll be putting in here. This does have Bluetooth 5.2, also has Wi-Fi 6E in it. So the latest protocols there, so we good, should get some really good speed and connectivity out of those. All right, now with that open, I believe the next step is the CPU. For the CPU, we have it right here. This is the Intel 13700K. Uh, I was AMD with my last build, so excited to kind of hop in and check out Intel again. Everything's looking good on there. And Intel, I guess, makes it pretty easy to line up here. There really isn't any guesswork because there are little notches that'll only go in one way. So we'll drop that in, give it just a tiny wiggle, put the cover back down, and clamp it down on there. We should be good to go. All right, so next up we have the memory. We've got Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5, 32 gigabytes, the 6,200 megahertz. So the RAM here, Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5. We have two 16 gig sticks, and it looks like we put those in A2 and B2 slots. All right, next up we are doing the M.2. Like I said, we have the WD Black SN850X. And that's gonna go under this little compartment here. So we've got this little piece down here we need to bring up and then that will reveal our M.2 slot. So I did a full review of the 850X from WD Black already. Um, so you can find that on the channel. I'll put a link in the corner if you wanna check that out. Basically this is their top of the line is going up to 7,300 megabytes per second. Of just screaming fast, uh, just an awesome card. So this is gonna be absolutely perfect for this build. So we can get, you know, the best speeds out of, you know, this kind of high end motherboard and everything, all the features that it has on here. Uh, this is the two terabytes. So should be plenty of storage for the operating system and for gaming and everything. So very excited about that. And we'll just get it slotted in here. Just put it in at an angle, install it there. Everything's all ready. This metal bit here is a heat sink. So you can remove this and it will make contact uh, with the actual drive there and kind of spread out that heat a little bit. So that's pretty awesome. You can just use the included screw there to hold that into place. And then of course we'll have the white cover that goes over top to uh, make that all look nice and seamless. Pop the cover on. We've got the case laying down here. I already have the standoff installed, so we'll get this in here. And this board already has the IO shield on it and it's not removable, it's like a part of it. So we don't have to take that off, which is really nice. So we'll get that just positioned in here and then we'll go ahead and screw everything down on the standoffs. All right, so I got the motherboard in. Now I'm going to do just a little bit of wiring up, kind of get like the front IO, get the eight pin at the top of the motherboard and kind of get that kind of stuff set up here really quick. Okay, so now it's time to start doing the fans. And I think I've decided to remove these three that are already included and put them on the top so that I can put the Kraken along here. So hopefully pull in cold air from the front here 
and then exhaust it up the top and in the back. Also have fans on the bottom pulling in air as well. So uh, that's the goal. <laughs> We're gonna get this set up and we'll see how it goes. I mentioned this earlier, but there is this bracket here that you can remove for these fans at the front, which makes installing fans and a radiator uh, a lot easier. So with those removed, we should be able to pull this out pretty easily. I'll have to get the cables for the fans out as well. And then we should be in business to get everything mounted up here. Okay, so I just got the radiator installed. I set it up as an intake here. So I removed the three fans that came included and then put the radiator in here. So it's gonna be sucking in air here, kind of through the front of the computer. It's not gonna look uh, great with the RGB because the uh, to get it set up as an intake, the RGB fans are facing the radiator. They aren't facing the interior of the computer. So that'll look a little weird, but hopefully it should be a little bit cooler. Uh, I don't know, I might decide to change it up and see how it performs as an exhaust up the top. But uh, I think for this setup, this is what I'm gonna run with for now. All right, so next up is the power supply. And like we said, this is the brand new C1200 gold. It's coming in a little over $200. Just announced today uh, with the H9. Here's where we have all the cables. We've got like the power cable here. All the other cables as well that we'll need to run. And some more here as well as some screws for mounting the PSU. And then is the power supply. And for the GPU, we are using the PNY XLR8 RTX 4070 Ti, this was just recently announced. And it features 7,680 CUDA cores, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM, 192-bit memory interface, and a TDP of 285 watts. This is a big, beefy card, but it's powered by NVIDIA DLSS3. It has ray tracing, it has that 16-pin power cable, and it should just be a beefy workhorse for the 1440p monitor that I will be using for gaming on here. The recommended PSU size for this is 700 or greater, so that 1200 watt from NZXT will be just perfect for this. All right, so I think I have everything plugged in, so we're going to try to turn it on and see if it'll post, I guess. Awesome. RAM is showing up, NVMe is showing up. All right, we'll get Windows installed and we'll try to do some gaming. Uh, first, I'll do some cable management and then we'll do all that, so awesome. So I've been running the Heaven benchmark for 10 minutes to test the GPU. Uh, everything's running really smoothly, as you can see up here. The fan, or the GPU temperature is at 48 degrees, 47 degrees Celsius, and the fan is so quiet. You really can't hear it at all. It doesn't sound like anything's working hard in there at all. So very impressed with how quiet it is and everything is running very smoothly. Okay, on the CPU side of things, it's a little bit of a different story running full bore. So I'm using Prime 95, uh, got it running here. As you can see, the CPU load is 100%, temperature is 83 degrees. So that's pretty spicy in there. Uh, you can see it on the cooler as well. So a little bit of a different story. You can hear the fans a little bit more. It's still not overly loud, but definitely a bit of a different story on CPU compared to GPU. All right, so here we're playing Battlefield 2042. This is Conquest 64 versus 64. Let's see resolution, and we are on the ultra settings. DLSS is on performance, and let's go back and see what we're getting. So everything's really smooth, getting 180 FPS. Let's see, GPU utilization is pretty high, and CPU is really low. So looking over here, we can see the temps. CPU's in the 50s, GPU's in the 40s, and yeah, I mean everything is just incredibly smooth. Very very smooth and i just set dlss to quality still getting 160 fps 
uh, which is just insane. All right, so here we are in War Zone 2. You can see it's running 1440. For quality, I have DLSS turned on. I have it on quality. But otherwise, I have everything pretty much topped out in here. Particle lightning, we could, we could turn that up. I think we're good. Apply settings, and then let's go back and see what we're at. So, getting 200 FPS, <laughs> GPU is being used like crazy, CPU is barely being used. Once again, I can still hear the fans running a little bit. Not super loud. Might be able to hear them in the background. <laughs> we'll pop over and take a look at the temperatures. GPU's hovering around 50, CPU's at 44. All right, so I just did the benchmark mode on Forza Horizon 5. You can see we're running at 1440. I cranked all the visual settings uh, up to high, or as high as it would go. For some reason it said it's adjusted to low, but it's working just fine on extreme. So getting some very good FPS, usually over 100, using 99% of the GPU, but everything's still staying quiet over there, nice and cool on the GPU side. You can see here some of the frame rates it's saying runs 110. So uh, ran very smooth, everything cranked up, definitely happy with how that is performing. All right, so some overall impressions of the NZXT H9, having just built it and spent a couple days kind of playing around with it a little bit. Uh, so far, it's a very big and beautiful case. Probably my only, you know, the only downside of this, and you know, it's something you have to expect going into it, is that this does take up quite a bit of room on your desk. So if you are a minimalist or a fan of, you know, very minimal setups, then you might want to look for something else like the H5 or the H7. But the H9 is just a beautiful way to showcase the internals of your case. Now you've seen all of the thermals, all the performance and everything. Obviously the GPU kept well under control, you know, hovering right around 50 degrees under full load, which is great. The CPU was a little alarming. Um, I don't know if that's the way that I have the uh, Kraken positioned with, you know, the radiator there at the intake, the fans on the inside pulling air through the radiator. You know, that's maybe the only thing I could maybe tweak around with a little bit and play with to try to get some better cooling on that. But at the same time, you know, it's not, it's, it's kind of like right at the limit of what is acceptable for heat. So that was a little bit alarming, but that was only under, you know, the most extreme stress test with the CPU running 100%. Under normal gaming conditions, it was never anything close to that. Um, actually, this GPU was doing a heck of a lot of work and the CPU wasn't really doing much at all. But as far as the actual layout and building in the case, you know, everything is very easy to maneuver around in there. It's nice to be able to remove the little trays for mounting the radiator at the front and also on the top. Uh, it's really nice having that second chamber where, I mean, I did spend some time uh, doing cable management and tidying things up in there, but you don't really need to. You can just kind of shove stuff in there and forget about it, uh, which could also, you know, it could be a good thing or a bad thing. But what I also like about this case is, you know, from a creator standpoint, there's lots of room in here for expandability. You know, if you need to add, more, um, if you need to add more storage, you, know, you have up to four SSDs and a couple HDDs in here as well. So lots of room for storage in there. I think going forward in the future, you know, I would like to get, because this is a big, beautiful case, I would like to get a little bit more RGB in there. So maybe swap out these fans up top and the bottom as well, get some more RGB in the case. But otherwise, um, this is a really nice, handy way to build. It's kind of the, you know, maximalist, just, you know, make sure you have enough room for everything and then, and then take it from there. But if you want a big PC case that showcases everything inside and is easy to build in, um, I've been having a great experience with the H9. Looking at the price in here, it does come in two different flavors. We have the H9 Flow, which is what we have with the mesh up top and on the side over here. And that comes in, that starts at $160. And then the Elite, which has the RGB and more glass up top, starts at $240. So definitely more expensive than like the H5 or the H7, but you're getting more case in there, you get some more fans. So it's kind of where you need to decide, you know, where you want to take this in the future. If you need more room for expandability or if you want something that's a little bit smaller. I really like how quiet the case is. I mean, it's running right now. I'm not sure if that's picking up at all. Even the microphone is pretty much pointed right at the rear fan. But, you know, it, under most circumstances, it was very quiet. Even when the GPU was running at 100%, it was very quiet. It was only when the CPU was under that stress test that the fans kind of kicked up. But Otherwise, it's been 
a very quiet, very good looking case that has been easy to build in. And then also real quick, I just want to touch on this GPU, the 4070 Ti, because it was just chewing through everything I was throwing at it at 1440p. It really is a workhorse and it's quiet. The only downside of it is I could not get the, was it Velocity X software from PNY to actually adjust the RGB. I could not get that to work. And so I couldn't change the RGB at all. I'm not sure if that's just a temporary issue or what's going on there. That's the only frustrating thing with this card. But otherwise, I was really impressed with how well it was handling, you know, both Battlefield 2042 and uh, Warzone 2 as well. It was just chewing through those. And Forza Horizon 5, everything maxed out. It was giving, you know, over 100 FPS. So uh, very powerful card, great for 1440p. Once again, this is the PNY GeForce RTX 4070 Ti. You know, this is an expensive card coming in at $840 for the standard version, $860 for the overclocked version. This is from BNH. So definitely quite a bit of money to fork over there, but it's also been performing really well. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this quick little look at the NZXT H9 and this build. Do you have any questions, you know, any suggestions with the cooling? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're looking for some other videos to watch, I'll link to our review of the H5, as well as our most recent video. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so others can find it easier and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys. to